unbelievably helpful. In fact, I would venture to say EFA deficiency may be at least partially related to our epidemic of infertility. That's because of the relationship between, between cells. Cells have to communicate to each other, especially in pregnancy, especially in, um, uh, in fertilization. Think about what pregnancy really is. Pregnancy is really one cell, or two cells, or two cells combining, forming one cell, and then that cell divides. And as that cell divides, it creates more and more and more cells. Eventually you've got hundreds and then thousands and then billions and then trillions of cells. And all those cells have to talk to each other. They have to communicate to each other. And communication between cells, whether it's when the baby is being built or whether it's when a sperm meets an egg and what we call conception or fertilization, that is a communication kind of issue. It's a relationship issue. The two cells, the, the mother's egg cell and the father's sperm cell are communicating to each other. And when the baby's growing and developing, all the cells are communicating to each other. And here is the take home message. Cells communicate membrane to membrane. Cells communicate membrane to membrane. It's how they talk to each other via membrane to membrane interactions. So anytime you want to build something in the body, whether it's a baby, or whether it's tissue in an organ, the membranes of the cells are going to play a key role. And guess what? The membrane is largely made up of essential fatty acids. So if you're trying to get pregnant, EFAs can play a major role in helping in improving the, the odds of fertilization. Pregnancy is about the relationship between cells. You've got sperm and egg cell. Those got to interact with each other. Fertilization. And then you have the building of a baby, which is also a cell-to-cell -cell, uh, cell -cell phenomenon. By the way, egg cells are really interesting. You know a woman is born with all of her egg cells, and over the course of time, as they drop out, you get less and less egg cells. That's kind of an interesting phenomenon. It has a lot to do with all of our mating rituals that we have in this culture. We don't get that many egg cells. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back. We are back on the bright side. Thank you for listening, friends. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive page at brightsideben.com, where you'll find all the longevity products and a Join the Team link that you can click on if you want to join the Brightside Ben team and start a longevity business. Love to have you aboard for a one-time $25 fee. You can be part of the team. Help spread the word about the importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Change lives, really. A lot of folks haven't heard. The ideas we take for granted. If you're listening to this program, trust me, if you listen to this program, you are taking for granted a lot of information that, that we assume that everybody knows, but they don't necessarily know. And you can help spread the word. You can help share what you take for granted in terms of essential fatty acids, in terms of having your gallbladder not removed or having your gallbladder removed, taking a statin drug. These are all ideas that we talk about here on the Bright Side and that you guys have heard probably a million times, but the vast majority of people have not heard this. I just got back from New York City. They, there's so many things that people in New York don't know because that's the, the belly of the beast, as it were, of the pharmacomedical model. And they are still entrenched in the standard dogma of modern medicine about lowering your cholesterol and taking statin drugs and, and, and having organs removed, et cetera, et cetera. And it's not even just that because that happens everywhere. But they really trust the doctor. They really believe in their doctors. And that's what most of the world, most of the planet, most of this country is really like. And this is one of the things that we're dedicated to, those of us in longevity, is helping spread the word about the new ideas, which aren't really new ideas, but uh, new to the culture, about using nutritional supplements, about using uh, uh, at-home strategies like deep breathing and hot water and, and uh, uh, eating less food and intermittent fasting, etc. I'm sure you guys heard this article or read this article that came out yesterday. Sausages, ham, cause cancer. Red meat probably too. Meat causes cancer. Everybody's been talking about it, at least in the world of health. Listen, meat doesn't cause cancer. Nothing causes cancer. Cancer is a cancer cell that is stressed out beyond its limits. It doesn't know how, what else to do. Nothing causes cancer, unless maybe radiation. That's about the only thing that literally causes cancer. So this nonsense about meat causing cancer is based on a United Nations uh, finding. It was based on a review of 800 studies that 
quote, found sufficient evidence in humans that consumption of processed meat causes colorectal cancer. Now, what does that really mean? It means they analyzed a bunch of studies, and they found that it turns out that if people said they ate a lot of meat, they had a tendency to get cancer. But not everybody did. There were certainly people there who ate hot dogs and sausages who didn't get cancer. So if these things cause cancer, how come some people don't get cancer when they're, when, uh, when uh, they eat salt, when they eat them, when they interact interact with them. Well, clearly there's something else going on. Obviously, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see that if some people eat sausage and and hot dogs and corned beef and beef jerky and they don't get cancer, well, obviously there must be some other factors involved, and there is. Nothing causes cancer by itself. It has to happen in an environment of stress, an environment of burden, and. That's where the problem comes from. Most of us have an environment inside our bodies that are maxed out in terms of toxicity and in terms of ability to handle that toxicity. And then you throw in sausage, and that's where you run into a problem. But it's not the sausage that causes the cancer. And anybody, I see read scientific articles where they say this, causes cancer. Nothing causes cancer, except, as I say, maybe if you irradiate a cell, that, and that itself isn't causing the cancer, that's creating a stress on the cell. A cancer cell is a stressed out cell. That's all you need to know about cancer. Now, how you take care of it involves de-stressing the cell with nutrition, with oxygen, and with detoxification. Anyway, I didn't want to digress there, but that just got caught my attention from yesterday. As far as eggs go, which we were talking about before we went to, before we went to break, eggs, a woman has all her eggs when she's born. And there's a scarcity around eggs, and this is, accounts for a lot of our dating rituals and mating rituals that we have in this culture. There's a scarcity in eggs. There's lots of sperm around, but there ain't a lot of eggs. And throughout history, eggs have been really valued, and the carriers of eggs as well, for better or worse, as women will tell you. The fact that your egg is a cell it's actually an egg cell, is very, very interesting when it comes to nutrition. And I'll tell you what I mean by that tomorrow as we continue talking about hormone health and nutritional strategies for dealing, nutritional and nutritional supplemental strategies for dealing with hormones and improving hormone health. All right, time to hit the phones. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Nancy in Tennessee. What's going on, Nancy? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, Ben. Hey. It's been a while since I talked to you about my grandson, Ben. How's he, yeah, how's he doing? And, and his little boils and cysts on his face. Right. He's done well. He's two and a half now. And well, hang we on. Have, no, I want to talk to you about that. So he had okay. boils and cysts on his face, and you say he's do doing well. That means he has less boils and cysts, no boils and cysts? Improvement well, in the still, he still has one that will not go away. Okay, he, but there's, there's, you notice that there's going away. There's less than there were before we started the program. The well, protocol. there have been. Okay, so you noticed an improvement. Uh, He's trending in the right direction. Correct. Okay, what did you do? Uh, Tell me what you did. Okay, she did the um, elimination diet. Okay. She what, you know, kept a food diary. And what did she out, find out? Uh, definitely dairy. What did she find out about dairy? What did, well, let me, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but just, sure. I, wanna, I, wanna, I want everybody to hear this. Because, Nancy, again, you're going to, you know, we take for granted that these things work. But listen, Nancy, there, is there any medicine that could have done that? Is there any doctor that, strategy they could have done what you accomplished on, by yourself with these ideas? That's so huge. Mm -hmm. I want everybody to, to really savor this, uh, this, this case study, basically, is, is what happened with Nancy. Nancy called a couple of months ago. Her grandson had boils and cysts on the face. Boils and cysts are always a response, uh, an immune response. Something is, is getting into the body. That means food. So Nancy did the elimination diet, and now, voila, two months later, uh, only one cyst is left, trending upwards. There's no medicine on planet Earth that could have done it, no dermatologist that could have done it, no insurance program, no nothing, and Nancy did it herself. That's huge, Nancy. Now, we, there's yes. one left, so we can, we're going to work on that. So anyway. Yeah, it's bigger. It's, uh, it's actually not, okay, it's flat under his skin. You feel uh -huh. it. It's very soft. It's uh -huh. about the size of a dime. It's underneath and, the skin. It's not raised, in other words? Uh, it is. Well, it's under the skin. You can feel it under the skin. It's not hard. It's very soft and okay. mushy. And it sort of looks like a bruise on the outside of his skin. Okay. Um, and the doctors are calling it a cyst now. Okay. Um, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't okay. really matter. The system is not growing correctly, period. That's all you need to know, whether it's a boil, whether it's a cyst. Skin cells are not growing correctly, and there's inflammation there probably from a toxic 
lymphatic system. That's circula a circulatory system for poison, if you will. That's very simplistic. But uh, in terms of boils and cysts, the lymph is delivering poisons. And when poisons are clogging that up, it's not moving correctly, they'll, they'll pool in the skin. And that's, what a boil, that's where you're going to get the boils and cysts. At least that's partially the cause of it. So it's a poison issue. It's a clogging issue. Now, if you already notice some, some foods that are causing problems, there may be other ones that you haven't noticed. And it's only been a couple of months, and you're trending in the right direction. So it may be that that will go away as well. Continue with looking vigilantly for foods. Obviously, the ones you found, you want to eliminate. You don't want them eating. But continue looking for others. Then do other things for the digestive system. Is he on probiotics, a good back probiotic supplement? Nance? Yes, he's on a probiotic. Hello. Okay, hang on. We've got to take a break. Don't go away, Nancy. We'll finish up when we come back. If you're on hold, we'll get to you as well. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Nancy in Tennessee about boils and cysts. And by the way, last, uh, when we came back from our last break, we were talking about meat. I didn't mean to say meat is necessarily quality food processed meat because it, it's not quality food. It's a big problem food. But the idea that it causes cancer is not really an accurate statement and it's very misleading. What causes cancer is an unhealthy body. What causes cancer is a stressed out cell that doesn't know what else to do. And cancer is not an invasion. I heard Joe Biden talking about cancer earlier. He said, I know we can beat cancer. I know we can cure cancer. There's this idea that you can inject or drug or vaccinate yourself free of cancer. Cancer is just a response. It's the way the body handles and the cells handle being burnt out, being stressed out, not having enough nutrition, being toxic. And sugar counts as a toxin, by the way, and not having enough oxygen. All right. Nancy, boils and cysts are underneath the skin. They start off underneath. A boil is apparent on the top, and a cyst may be apparent on the top, but they start off underneath. By the time it's on the top, it's over. You don't hand, nobody can handle a boil or cyst on the top unless they inject it with something and just to, to help the body fight it. But the problem is underneath. Make sense, Nancy? Yes. Okay, so you look at the skin, and it's hard to tell from looking, but underneath is this dynamic, vast network of circulation of lymph and of blood and of nerves. And, of nerves. and, and a lot's happening under there. When that gets clogged up, a boil shows up, and it gets clogged up when we're toxic. It's really as simple as that. Nothing clogs it up. Uh, the, nothing is going to cause the circulatory system to clog up unless it's toxicity. So you're dealing with a toxicity issue, and that means the digestive system. It's as simple as that. Now, it may mean two things. You already did the elimination. I would continue with that. But it may be that his, his, his gut is not strong, and that always points to the bacteria. You said he's on a probiotic supplement, but that doesn't always do it. What, what is he using? We have a Mercola uh, powder probiotic. How many bacteria in it and what, how much? 60, uh, he, uh, okay, it has 60 billion. 60 billion units per dose? Per packet, uh-huh. And, then and, different and bacteria. he's only about 35 pounds, so he Okay, gets, that's uh, good. That's good. But how many diff 10, different types 10, of bacteria? 10, Hang on about a minute. 10, 10 right. types? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so and Mercola, you know... I'm not a big, necessarily a big fan of Mercola, but I, he seems pretty reputable, so you shouldn't, you shouldn't have a problem there. Here's the thing with probiotics. Different brand, the, the body responds to different brands differently. So you may want to play around with that. Also make sure he's eating fermented food. If he has any uh, uh, problems with specific types of foods, using digestive enzymes for fats, for example, can help. Grinding up his foods might help as well. Helping him, helping him process foods is where I would go. It does sound like a digestive problem, especially if he has a history that way. So using the probiotics, using the Healthy Start Pack, making sure that you're uh, making it easy for him to process his foods by using soups and smoothies and juices, vegetable juices. Um, in addition to the ultimate enzymes, which he might want to take with meals, using raw foods can get him enzymes as well. Uh, raw veggies can get him enzymes. If he has a problem eating those, use lots of salt and spices and oil or butter, coconut oil or butter. 
that makes the veggies more palatable. Sometimes it's braising them very, very slightly, but you want to be careful because that will kill the enzymes. You may also want to experiment with bile salts, B-I-L-E, bile salts, extra. They're in the ultimate enzymes, but extra. And also maybe some lecithin granules, sprinkle those on certain foods, especially fatty foods, and that might help him. Or you give him a, some lecithin granules in water after, after meals, that might help him absorb as well. Look at the digestive system, Nancy. One Talks quick, qu another thing. Okay, his mom is, you know, she gets worried when he has an active breakout, which he does right 